Hello, this is Matthew from Simply Learn, and today we're going to jump into Node.js and the architecture around Node.js. So why would you want to get involved with working with Node.js? Well, there's actually a lot of great reasons. A lot of the top web applications that you are working on today are built with Node.js. And the architecture beneath it allows you to not only just build those web applications, but to be able to build N-class applications. And by N-class, we mean microservice-driven applications, so applications that are running on uh, your phone, on your desktop, on your tablets. They can all be built with Node.js. And there are huge advantages around working with Node.js. Uh, one of the biggest ones being the huge community around Node.js. Uh, Node.js is just one of those standard solutions that you use for building out your core architecture when you're building out an application. And there's just a lot of people out there that are using it. So let's jump into web applications and how it'd be of benefit to you with your web solutions. So with Node.js, you have the client side and the server side. And the client side has the solutions that allow you to have hooks into the client side put together very easily. So behind the scenes of the client, you have service and um, uh, technology and connections to your database. So if you're building out your solutions with Node.js, it makes it very easy to be able to architect the entire solution from top to bottom for your entire environment. Whether you're building that locally on a test server, whether you're building for a traditional data center, or if you're working in the cloud. So on the client, you're going to be using technologies such as React.js and Angular. In the server, you're going to be using Node.js, PHP, and Java. And then the database itself is going to be something like MySQL or MongoDB. And actually, the number of databases that can be supported with Node.js is increasing all the time. So when you're working with uh, writing your code in Angular or React.js, you can even use Vue. That's actually a great one working with Node.js. You have this client-side framework that provides the hook into the web browser, whether it's a mobile web browser or a desktop web browser. The server is then responsible for taking those requests that are coming from the browser and interpreting them. And so um, on the server, you're going to run Node.js. You're going to run it alongside with PHP and Java. PHP, if you're not familiar, is a really great way to get started with uh, writing uh, web applications that run on the server. Java is just a really solid traditional um, application language for building out web apps. And then the, the server itself is going to be responsible for those client interactions with backend services, connecting with APIs, and reinforcing your security model. Now, can you do all of that in the client? Yes, you can do a lot of that in the client, particularly with the frameworks from Angular and Vue. They are really flexible. You can do some great things there. But one of the things you want to be looking at when you're working with building a web application is really three key things. One is security. The second Second is being able to scale your solutions and the third is speed and responsiveness and what I have found through my own architecture is that if I balance out between client and server the load and the structuring of how you actually build those solutions it really helps create a very seamless solution to your customer. And then at the back of all of this, you have your database and MySQL and MongoDB are two popular databases, but you can also use uh, Node.js to connect to many of the cloud databases that are running on AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, IBM, other services. They all have connectors in via Node.js into their databases. So let's talk about the Node.js architecture and understand why it's so good. So to begin with, uh, Node.js has what's called a single-threaded event loop architecture. And this allows you to be able to handle many, many concurrent clients at the same time. It's just a very flexible way of being able to scale up your support for many uh, clients. And then in addition to that, we have the JavaScript event-based model along with the JavaScript callback mechanism that allows you to have this standard approach to being able to connect with and talk and discuss interactions between the client and the server.
It's good to have these kind of standards where you're not using something that's unique to a specific framework or a specific technology. This just makes it so it's a more accessible for everybody. So if we look at the actual Node.js server itself, everything centers around the, the concept of the event loop. And the event loop has a, a, an event queue, an operation completed um, via requests, threaded pull, and then it'll actually do the actual computation or the file system interaction. All of this interconnects in a nice seamless loop the great thing again with Node.js is that it's not new technology. It's been around for almost a decade. It's very, very well tried out. Many of the largest websites out there are running Node.js. So let's now dig into each of the parts of the Node.js architecture. So let's talk about um, requests. So the, the way that the request works is that you have your framework uh, such as Angular uh, on the client, and that will then send a request to the web server. And there's many ways that those requests can happen through web workers, through forms, and through other interactions. But at some point, a request is sent to the server. And so the, these requests can be for data, they can be for deleting data, they can be for updating data, they can be for interacting with services as mentioned before, but the goal is to have some kind of request. Now, once that request actually hits the server, and then we start actually getting into the queuing and threading process that centers around the event loop. And this is where Node.js really excels because it's able to use that single threaded model to be able to manage from just even a few requests to tens of millions of requests. So it receives the actual uh, request and starts the event queue. And this is where that single threading process starts is by queuing everything up appropriately. And then it then maintains the threads within a pool. So you have the queuing process as one action, and then you have a, a threaded pool, which manages those um, threads as well. And then we have an event loop, which you know goes through and actually receives and processes those requests. And then finally, what we're doing is we're actually then going to be interacting with a system. And that could be a database, it could be a cloud system, it could be an API file system. But we're interacting with something that's outside of the Node.js server. So the Node.js server itself is doing some actions on the server. But then it's also interact with things outside of its own server environment. And so let's talk a little bit about that workflow. So requests come in, they go into the event queue, and they get spiraled through the event loop. And then we have a non-blocking operators, which are going to be doing the input-output polling, uh, such as KQ, ePoll, and other services. And from there, we're also going to be then interacting with the threaded pool, and we're going to be using the blocking operations to manage that threaded pool. And that threaded pool is going to now then go outside of the server and interact with something beyond the server. So whether that is a database or file system or API or microservice, these are the things that can be interacted with. And so let's go through some of these advantages that we have here. So, so I'm, I'm a fan of working with Node.js, so I have lots of advantages. So the one of the big ones though, right off the bat, is the ability to be able to handle multiple client requests quickly and easily. This really is important as we move into our digital ecosystems and we start scaling up solutions. You'll find that as you build successful apps, uh, the demand for those apps will grow exponentially. And what that means is you need to be able to have a solution that can interact with requests quickly and easily. There's no need to create multiple threads because of the event loop. Again, this is another thing that's really critical when it comes to building out solutions. You want to be able to have a solution that can scale massively at the flip of a switch. Now, particularly as we start working on building out cloud-based solutions. Node.js also utilizes really low resources and memory. Again, when it may seem like a, a small thing when you have a solution and it's using just a, maybe a small amount of memory, but if that solution keeps adding to that memory usage, you then re restrict it for how big that application can grow. So the less resources and memory a solution is using, the faster and higher it can grow in scale. 
So there we are. That's Node.js. Hope you uh, gained some information that's pertinent to the work that you're doing. As always, like and subscribe to our videos if you find them of value. Please post any comments you have into the comments area below. We do read those comments regularly and we do respond to them. So it's a great way for you to interact with leaders of Node.js. Have a great day. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.